a TMS system from slow response times, a problem with equipment. Workers haven't been happy with how the city has handled the issues. And as Fox News International reports, live in Detroit right now, these workers are now worried about keeping their jobs. Taryn. That's right. We've done the stories, you know, showing the battle between the city and its EMS workers. Well, now members of the union feel that the city has been pushed way too far, and it may be headed toward privatization. Where was the city of Detroit? We've been here a whole hour waiting on EMS. It's nothing you haven't heard before. Detroit EMS can't respond to 911 calls on time because there's not enough manpower or ambulances to go around. We've showed you the graveyards of dead trucks. It got so bad last summer, the fire commissioner ordered Crown Vicks to make emergency runs. Since then, it hasn't gotten much better. Right now, 30 of 44 rigs are still in need of repair. Instead of fixing the fleet, the city has been turned into private ambulance companies. My concern is that there are a significant number of privates operating in the city. Obviously, I want to protect their jobs. While the city claims mutual aid is nothing new, Joe Barney, who represents Detroit's EMS workers, feels there are several indications the city could be one step closer to privatizing its ambulance service. Obviously, it's a fear. You know, I receive calls daily from members telling me about privacy, private ambulances pulling our calls. I get calls daily about this unit being down, that unit being down. Barney says the numbers don't add up. The city has budgeted $25 million for the EMS department, yet the rank and file is shrinking. And instead of fixing the ambulances, almost every day they are forced to deal with no units available. Private companies are filling the gaps, pulling 60 to 70 of Detroit's runs each day, especially rapid response out of Redford. We're very concerned about rapid response, and so much so that we brought it to labor relations attention. Sources close to the administration say more of their trucks have been seen throughout the city since former fire commissioner Seth Doyle and James Mack met with rapid response back in December. Before Doyle and Mack were fired, we're told at one point Rapid's vehicles were positioned throughout the city in hopes of improving response times. Whatever they need, they've, they've got our number, they can call. Anytime they want, we'll help them out. Rapid's VP Bruce Tenniswood denies any backdoor deal. He claims the only agreement Rapid has with the city is mutual aid. We don't have a financial agreement with the city of Detroit. If they have an overflow of runs, they send them to us. What is the incentive for Rapid Response? Um, we make our business of um, assisting customers. Business the city misses out on. The average ambulance reimbursement is $514 a run. We've heard that this might be a move toward privatization in the city of Detroit. I absolutely do not believe that. So there has not been a discussion with the city of Detroit? No. The spokesperson to the same. There are no plans to privatize EMS. The union hopes that's the case, since more than 167 jobs are on the line. People were worried that they might lose their jobs. Absolutely not. That is absolutely not true. Not on my watch. I was going to say, could, it be, could there be a chance that it might be going on and you just don't know about it? I know that. I can tell you for absolute certainty it's not. It's not. Why can you say it with absolute certainty? Because I'm the one that talks to him. And I'll be the one that's making that, and it's not happening. And if you think about that, though, it would be thousands and thousands of runs the cities would be missing out on. Now, we did speak to the chief of EMS, Gerald James, and he said that he, too, has heard the same things. He has confronted the city a few times about this, but the city has denied it to him as well. The city telling us that right now they are working to fix the problems, fix the response times, and, and uh, fix the equipment. In fact, they told us that they have hired 16 new EMS workers. They are now working their way through the academy, and it will be, though, a few months before they hit the street. But but it is a step in the right direction, we're told. You will? Uh, Tara, it looks like the city in some cases is choosing private companies rather than fix its own problems. What does the union president have to say about this? Well, you know, we did t when we spoke with Joe Barney, he said that right now he wants to open up a dialogue between the city and the union because right now, because of all the, the, the rift, the negative stories that have been done, there really just hasn't been much talking between the two. He said that he really wants to explore some options. Number one, he said maybe coming up with a business plan for EMS or at least uh, having someone with a business degree run EMS or even a possibility of breaking away from the fire department altogether and running it as a separate entity, but really they need to start talking to make that happen, and um, they, he really wants to do that with the city. Back to you.